Let's plan a fabulous destination wardrobe together. Destination, Nice, France. There's nothing quite as beautiful as the French Riviera. Join me today as we map out some unforgettable stops along the French Riviera, the perfect inspiration for planning your own incredible journey. Let's create and design the perfect travel capsule wardrobe for a dream getaway to the breathtaking destination of Nice, France. Renowned for its mesmerizing ocean vistas, charming towns, and delectable cuisine, Nice beckons with promises of unforgettable experiences. Picture yourself wandering through cobblestone streets, soaking up the sun on beautiful pebble beaches, touring hilltop botanical gardens and museums, and exploring local antique and flower markets. Hello and welcome or welcome back to So Pomona. I'm Rebecca and I'm so glad you're here. On this channel, I love talking everything fashion and sewing with a focus on travel and capsule wardrobes. Join me today in my first of a series of dream destinations where I'll share travel capsule inspiration. We're going to design a color palette for each location and pick fabric and sewing patterns, as well as what I would pack for my own whirlwind trip. Each month, I'll share a new location and pick one inspiration piece or outfit to recreate. I'd love it if you join me and sew up something fun with me each month. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and like this video. If you have a trip you're planning, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to take your recommendation. For my plan today, I'm designing a capsule collection around a 10 to 14 day couples trip to Nice and the surrounding French Riviera. I'm going to share what I would bring from my current handmade wardrobe, as well as any pieces I would create for this trip. Plus, I'm going to share a bunch of French indie patterns that I, that I think would be perfect for your next trip abroad. I visited Nice last in my early 20s, backpacking through Europe after studying art in Italy. I'd love to take a trip back to one of my very favorite places with my husband. My husband loves to dive, so this would also be a great active vacation for the two of us. Maybe for our 20th anniversary. So let's start with the, some details about the destination. Nestled along the French Riviera, Nice is a picturesque city known for its stunning Mediterranean coastline, vibrant street life, and rich cultural heritage. Nice offers a blend of history, art, and natural beauty that captivates visitors from around the world. All right, let's start out with my dream stay. I figured while I'm designing this bucket list trip, I might as well mention the places I would love to stay at someday. While these aren't maybe in my current budget, a girl can dream. My first choice for a stay in Nice would have to be the Hotel Negresco. This five-star hotel is located on the famous Promenade d'Anglais and offers a private beach club and luxurious accommodation. A symbol of the city of Nice for over a century, the Negresco offers the Côte d'Azur its elegant pink dome and facade. The Negresco has a gorgeous collection of works of arts and rare furniture dating from Louis XIV to the present day. The hotel offers views of the Mediterranean Sea and the Bay of Angels. It is located only 15 minutes from the International Airport and Old Nice on the other side. The Museum Messina is right next door. There's a beach club restaurant as well as the, as well as Michelin starred restaurant Le Chanticleer. I love the junior and exceptional suites. I think they look beautiful. The de I love the decor and the fine art in all of the rooms. I could even bring my dog Daphne on this trip. They also have a wonderful spa, a swimming pool, and a yoga studio. When traveling overseas, I prefer a longer trip. For me, the biggest cost is usually airfare. So I plan a 10 to 14 day vacation. This provides ample time to explore the city and, and surrounding areas at a leisurely pace. I'm thinking of this as a pretty active trip with lots of walking, maybe a little bit of swimming and diving for my husband. Visits to museums, gardens and villages, and trips to the antique and flower markets. Plus amazing food, season and weather. May is an ideal time to visit Nice as the weather is warm and sunny, but not yet too hot and the, tourist and the tourist crowds are still relatively small. 
average temperatures range from about 63 degrees Fahrenheit to 73 degrees, making it perfect for outdoor activities and sightseeing. Bit cooler than I'm used to here in Florida, but still spring-like. Activities and cultures. Here's how I would plan out my trip. Day one would be my travel day and flight. So I am in Florida, so I would fly into Nice from Miami. That would be Air France with a connection in Paris and the trip is about 11 hours and 40 minutes. So I looked up the prices for this. So it'd be about 3,700 for premium economy, 10K for business and about 13 to 14K for premier. Day two, for any trip I take, I like to plan my first day to decompress and rest while I'm recovering from any jet lag. I plan a simple day at my lodging and then take a walk along the promenade de Singles with my husband. Days three to five, for the next three days, I'd opt for the French Riviera Pass. The, I'd go for the 72 hour one. My top picks for using the French Riviera Pass would be the Matisse Museum, the Simias Monastery, and the Chagall Museum, all up on the hill, the Villa Euphrasie de Rothschild in St. Jean Cap Ferrat, visiting the tea room and the gardens, and a train trip to Aes and Villefranche sur Mer, day six. This day would be more active. I'd walk the coastal path. I visit the antique markets, which are open on Mondays, and the flower markets, which are open the rest of the week. I'd indulge in local cuisine at traditional Niswa restaurants. And of course, no trip is complete without some local fabric shopping. I'll shop while my husband goes scuba diving. Here's a list of some stores I found. For days 10 and beyond, these would be things I would do as time allows. The Archaeological Museum in Nice at Simias, the Messina Museum, thence to see the Chapel of the Rosary with the Matisse stained glass windows, the Chateau Grimaldi, the Picasso Museum in Antibes, Oceanographic Museum in Monaco. And then my final day would be spent flying home from Nice to Miami. color palette. I would draw inspiration from the vibrant colors of Nice's coastline and architecture. Think shades of azure blue, pastel yellow, and terracotta orange. Here are some of my favorite styles for this location. Beautiful blouses, stripes, beach dressing, small floral prints, pastel hues, white pants, and vivid blues. In spring, Nice France offers a delightful blend of mild weather and blossoming scenery calling for a wardrobe that balances style and practicality. Opt for breezy dresses, lightweight tops, tailored shorts, and comfortable sandals in chic, effortless styles that reflect the laid-back elegance of the French Riviera. Here are some clothing styles that are perfect for exploring Nice in the spring. I'm going for a relaxed vibe with a lot of linens, lighter colors, and a seaside look. Elegant yet simple. Start with light layers. Opt for breathable fabrics like cotton, linen, and lightweight knits to layer comfortably throughout the day as temperatures rise and fall. Chic dresses. Pack a selection of breezy dresses in floral prints or pastel hues for a touch of elegance while strolling through the picturesque streets or dining at outdoor cafes. Stylish tops and blouses. Embrace the effortless French chic with classic tops and blouses featuring delicate details like ruffles or lace. Perfect for pairing with jeans or skirts. Comfortable footwear. Choose comfortable yet stylish footwear such as sandals, espadrilles, or stylish sneakers for exploring the city's charming alleys and cobblestone streets. Lightweight outerwear. Bring along a lightweight jacket, cardigan, or trench coat for cooler evenings or breezy days, ensuring you stay cozy while admiring the sunset along the promenade de Anglais. Versatile bottoms. Pick a mix of versatile bottoms like cropped pants, shorts and skirts that can easily be mixed and matched, accessories. Complete your look with accessories like sunglasses, like sunglasses a wide brimmed hat, a lightweight scarf, or a stylish bag to add flair and functionality to your ensemble. And remember, you can get my free handmade travel wardrobe planner on my website, sopomona.com. I'll leave all the links below in the description. Here is my basic packing list for Nice. Four to five tops, one to three dresses or rompers, two to three shorts, pants, or skirts, 
one jacket, one layering piece, one cover up, one to two bathing suits, sleepwear and activewear or loungewear, three pairs of shoes, one purse and one beach bag, and one hat, and two pairs of sunglasses. The options I've listed can be switched around based on your personal preferences. For the travel days, I suggest wearing your heaviest pieces, your jacket, your sneakers, etc. Aim for comfort and pack lightly. I have a whole video on creating the perfect travel outfit that I'll link up here. For this vacation, I would probably buy my hat and accessories and bag in Nice as they would make great souvenirs to bring back home. I would also leave room to bring back fabric and souvenirs in my bag. I often bring a collapsible I often bring a collapsible carry-on bag for just this purpose for the flight home. Anything larger and I would pay to have it shipped home. For this trip, I would plan on bringing a regular suitcase and plan to use Nice as my home base, venturing out for day trips. I would pack assuming I would be able to launder my clothes at least once during my vacation. Now let's talk about some French sewing patterns. Let's get inspired for your trip with some indie French sewing patterns. Now it's time to go over what I would actually bring from this trip. And I wanted to show you how we would go about this process normally. So what I would do is I would go with my color palette. And for this one, I'm looking at those azure blues, um, some pale pinks, rust, um, cream. Um, I'd love to have in some yellow. I don't have any of that in my wardrobe. Very earthy colors inspired by the buildings in the area and the ocean. So this is how I would go about it. I would pull everything out, anything I think would work in the color palette I'm going with. So I do have some pale greens, some aquas, some browns, um, some blues, and then a lot of cream. So I pulled out a bunch of pants and obviously I cannot pack all these pants. So what I would do is I would look at my tops and make sure that everything I pick is going to match with everything else. Well, first I would start with my pants and I really want to pack lightly on pants because they're very heavy. And so I would go with what I think would work with the majority of the clothes here. I know I want a cropped length because um, this is very easy for casual touring and it's very comfortable. So I would bring this pair. Then I would choose between probably the, these rose colored ones because they'd be very light to pack. And then possibly the periwinkle pants because I think it's a fun, I think this would be a fun ocean color to add and um, they're very comfortable. 
So this is how I would start. I would just start whittling down everything I have. And then as I pack, I'll see how much more I can fit. So I would take these pants away, but I'd wear these on a different trip. They're just really not the perfect color for the palette I'm going for. After that, I would look at my dress selections. Now I pulled out a few dresses that I think would work um, for the city. I love this dress, but I would need to make a new slip for it. But it packs so lightly that I could probably get away with bringing this anyway if I made a slip for it. I love this dress. The colors are perfect. All the colors in the palette that I chose. So I would definitely bring this one. Plus this one folds, this one rolls and folds very small. So I know this is a great travel dress. I would probably skip this one though it is pretty and could double as a cover up because I think it will be a little too chilly for the time of year. I might just bring this as a fun extra piece for a night out on the town or to wear as a regular slip because it's beautiful and the color is right. All right, next I'm going to go over my pajamas. I picked out two sets in the colors I liked. Um, I would probably go with these because they are lighter and I'm trying to pack as much as I can in pretty colors uh, so that I have room to bring back fabric. So I would go with the lightest pair of PJs. All right, next up, I need a travel outfit that's going to be comfortable for on the airplane, but still look elegant afterwards. So when I was going through my closet, I decided I would pull out something very cozy. So this may look more like winter wear, but I'm going to be chilly on the plane. And because I'm picking May in Nice, this would feel cold to me. Um, temperatures right now in May at our home start at start in the mid 70s in the morning and go up to the 90s. So the weather there in the 60s to 70s will feel chilly to me. Now you may be totally different. This may feel hot to you. So for me, I would want a cozy outfit and I would want something that I can use as multiple pieces. So I do have this sweater in two lengths, but I would bring the shorter one because I think this is more versatile if I need to throw over something warm on other things. And this I would wear on the plane, probably with one of my t-shirts, which is why I chose this because it's a very neutral color. So I would probably wear, so you can see this, I would wear the skirt with the t-shirt and then a pair of sneakers, which I will show you my shoe selection in a minute. So this would look nice, uh, especially if I found a nice scarf to put over this. Um, this would be very casual and comfortable. And then I would layer the sweater over when I got on the plane and I was chilly. All right, next up are layering pieces. Oh, and I did have one other travel pant option that I was thinking, which is this knit ponty pant. But I realized after I was looking at my colors, it's a little too dark for what I would want. Um, it was between that and the skirt for a travel layering piece. So you can see the top would look good with both, but I think the skirt will be a little cozier and this, the skirt, I know they both would pack easily, but, um, I would go with this. Plus it gives me an extra skirt option that I can pair later on. All right. Next are layering pieces. I have a dress shirt, which I would definitely bring because a dress shirt is great. I kind of wish I had a print. Um, if I had a printed blouse, I would bring that instead, which may lead to one of my inspiration makes for the month. But um, I'm going based on, today I'm going based on what would I pack if I really had to pack everything based off my current wardrobe right now. So I would bring this blouse and then I would probably bring both of these. These pack very small and it would give me a lot of layering options because I think with the tops I currently have in my wardrobe, I would need more layering pieces because I don't have a lot of um, blouses that have a full length sleeve. And you'll see when I show you um, the blouse selection I have, these will go with every single blouse so that I have something to layer with each piece to change up my looks and switch up my wardrobe. 
So next up would my, be my blouse choices. I really wanna to stick to four tops, maybe five. I would do five as the fifth one as my travel look possibly. So I'm gonna keep this t-shirt here. So this would be my main travel t-shirt and I would probably wear it once again. And um, this is the poppy t-shirt that I um, showed in the French sewing patterns. And I made this up in this really luxurious looking knit. It's got a slight sheen to it. It's a little bit transparent, but very, very pretty. And I like that this is a little bit more of an, ele this is more of an elevated t-shirt. All right, so I've got this blouse. I think it's beautiful and it would pack up light. So even though it doesn't necessarily match with everything, I would probably bring it. This one, and it would match with all three of my bottoms. And this one is reversible. So this would be a great suggestion to make a reversible tank top because then you get two different wears out of it. Um, you'd have to launder it in between, but you'd get more versatility in your wardrobe. I was thinking about this bodice top because I think it would be cute but it is a bit heavy, so this would be one of my extra pieces. So what I usually do is, if there's a few extra pieces that I think would be nice to travel with, I would put them to one side. So these blue pants, I would like to bring these, but if I don't have room, they would stay back. And then probably, the dresses are tiny, so I don't think that'll be a problem. Okay, a simple pecan tank top, which will work with every color. I like to pick a lot of tank tops because they're very light and easy to wear. I would probably wear this one. Uh, I would bring this one too because it's the kind of thing I like to wear every day. And I feel like this can be dressed up or down very easily. And then I had a comfy t-shirt picked out in here, but I, and I do think I would bring this because it would look really nice with that skirt. And um, while I couldn't wear it with the, well, maybe I could wear it with those rust pants. This would be a great option for a more active day when I just want to be comfortable. Let's, let me show you how many pieces I have so far. I have four tank tops, two t-shirts, one blouse, two layering pieces, two pants with an optional third pant that I could add on, and then three different dresses. Now you can see I can get away with packing a little more for this trip because I'm picking fabrics that are extremely light or they roll very easily so that I don't have to worry about packing. So I love packing knits. I love packing um, things that are slinky because they can go, they can get very small. So you can see this would be a very lightweight bag so far. And then I would bring one bikini set. So I picked out my teal closet core face swimsuit. And I have two bottoms that are in the same colorway that match this. And those are very lightweight. What I do wish I had was a full piece bathing suit in a neutral color, like a brown or a black, or maybe a bright blue that I could um, wear as an alternate top under things. And then I could wear it at, at the beach and then take off my bottoms if I was gonna go in the ocean. And then I would bring one pair of lightweight yoga pants. And um, these would be just for when I'm doing my yoga. Um, I could also wear them as sleep pants. They're very comfortable. And because they're in a swim fabric, they are super lightweight. That is one thing. If you're going to bring active wear, pick active wear that's very light. I have a lot of active wear and heavier knits and they take up a lot more room, especially this is, um, I'm assuming I'm packing a suitcase that I'm going to check and I wanna save as much room as I can so I can bring more clothes. Accessories and shoes. I did pick out a hat that would match with all of these outfits, but I would probably, if I was going on a trip to Nice, I would buy that there because it would be a great souvenir to bring back. I would bring one purse. Um, this little handbag is neutral. The color goes with everything here. And then I might buy a beach tote while I was in Nice because that would be also a fun souvenir to bring back. 
I tend to pack very light on jewelry when I'm traveling abroad. Maybe a few um, necklaces, um, a few pairs of small earrings, but nothing too big. And that is something I like to buy when I'm abroad um, because it's a great souvenir. I love having jewelry that means something and that I can look back on and remember a vacation. All right, shoes. I always bring a pair of sneakers when I'm traveling because I like to be comfortable. I have foot issues. I need to have comfortable shoes for touring and walking. Now, um, these are the Clifton Hoka's I have right now. If I were going on this trip, I would probably order a new pair. And I know they have one in a cream with the rust and this uh, slight rose color in them. And I would probably buy that version to match with my outfits. Um, otherwise, you can also design your outfits around your shoes if there's specific shoes you want to bring with you. So I know I need my walking shoes. I would also bring for this trip, because it's pebble beaches and there'll be lots of walking, I would bring a beach pair of shoes. Um, these are my Keen. Well, I would bring my Keen shoes because these are water shoes and these would be great for walking on those pebble beaches. Um, the color actually goes with everything. Um, I am going to replace these probably in the next year or two, so I could order another pair if I knew I needed them. But these are great water shoes. I would most likely bring one prettier pair of shoes. So in my case, it's going to be flats and they're going to be comfortable and they're going to be supportive because of my foot. But you can pick any shoes you want. So um, for today, I chose my Vionic, uh, I chose my Vivea blue shoes. Um, these are great. They'll go with almost every color I've chosen. Um, they're kind of like a denim blue color. And um, these are so comfortable. So these will be great. And they don't take up a lot of space for packing. And then my other choice might be a pair of Vionics. Now I know they have these in a Tweety print and there's another one that's white with a black toe. These ones I wore to an event, so I needed them in black, but I might order a lighter toned pair to wear with my looks if I needed that, because these are comfortable, but they're a little dressier. My suggestion is always you wear the heaviest outfit on the plane, so my sneakers with my heaviest outfit, and if I was bringing a jacket, that would also be worn on the plane. Now, when I was going through my wardrobe, I realized I didn't really have a cover-up that I would like to bring on this trip. I am making a bunch this summer, so I didn't want that to be my inspiration piece. But what I was thinking was I could make a dress that would double as like a tunic or a cover-up that could be very cool. So one project I was thinking about was to use this beautiful eyelet I have. This is from Stone Mountain and Daughter. And what I was thinking is, I love an eyelet, but I don't like an eyelet that's too, um, too ruffled or too much. So what I was thinking is if I made a tunic, possibly with a band and a, and a small collar, if I made a banded tunic that had slits down the side and like a bell length sleeve, this could be really pretty and be worn over all these other pieces. So I think that would be a great option. I'm gonna put up my inspiration picture so you can see um, some of the ideas I was thinking about. I got this silk from um, Cynthia's Fine Fabrics in Tamarack. I go there for my ASG meetings. And I think this is really beautiful and I could see a blouse made out of this would be really lovely. So that is option two. And I'm gonna put up some inspiration pictures. I could also see this as a longer shirt dress. I think this could look really cool. And then my third option is my favorite place is the Matisse Museum. I went there when I was in my 20s, when I was backpacking, and it really made me love Nice, and that's probably why it's like one of my favorite places to go. So I was thinking I would be inspired by the colors of Matisse and make something in these knits. These are in like a periwinkle lavender color, I think they're both from Amour Vert. Um, this one is in La Pisse, and I just love this vivid color. So this was really my first choice for my inspiration, but then I wasn't sure if it was too bold because I tend to travel in very neutral colors, but I think this could be really cool and fun 
and maybe if I just wore it to and I do like to bring one real pop of color when I travel, just something different and unique. And I could see this being interesting. Um, so this look would be more based on the color. Um, and these two are perfect together. This one is a rib knit. And this one is just a really soft, luxurious, um, kind of thin stretch knit. But I love the color. So I'm not really sure what I would make out of those, but I think they're really pretty. So those are my three ideas for inspiration projects for this month. I'd love it if you wanna join along and sew something that's inspired by this location. Um, if there's something you saw in this video that really inspires you to make something, I'd love it if you'd sew along with me this month. So um, let me know which project you think looks the most interesting. And I'm going to sew that up sometime this month to create my niece inspired outfit. And um, head over to my blog. I'm going to have some more book reviews, um, like this book, Travels Through the French Riviera. This is an artist's guide to um, this is an artist's guide to the Côte d'Azur, and it's just a beautifully illustrated book with beautiful pictures. I mean, this this is just a gorgeous book to look through. So I'm going to have a lot of book reviews over there, as well as some movie some movie reviews, different things to get you inspired for a trip to Nice. Next month's destination capsule will be to Italy. So come back for that and head back, head back later in the month and I will have that finished outfit. Are you traveling anywhere fun soon? Let me know below in the comments. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy sewing.